Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about Tenhu. The four dengue viruses originated in monkeys and independently jumped to humans in Africa and Southeast Asia between 100 and 800 years ago. Dengue remained a relatively minor geographically restricted disease until the middle of 20th century. The disruption of Second World War in the particular coincidental transport of Aedes mosquito around the world in cargo are thought to have played a crucial role in dissemination of this virus. Dengue hemorrhagic fever was first documented only in 1950s during the epidemics in Philippines and Thailand. It was not until 1981 that large numbers of dengue hemorrhagic fever cases began to appear in the Caribbean and Latin America, where highly effective disease control programs had been in place until the early 1970s. Dengue is an emerging viral disease. Dengue is the most rapidly spreading mosquito-borne viral disease in the world. In the last 50 years, incidence has increased 30-fold with increasing geographic expansion to new countries and in the present decade from urban to rural settings. An estimated 50 million dengue infections occur annually and approximately 2.5 billion people live in dengue endemic countries. Dengue is widely prevalent in India and all the four serotypes and now the fifth one also which has been newly discovered is found in the country. It is reported that 18 states and union territories since 1996 with about 450 million population are at risk. During 2006 there were 12,317 cases and 184 deaths due to dengue in India. Dengue is transmitted between people by the mosquito Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopticus, which are found throughout the world. Insects that transmit disease are known as vectors. So, vector for dengue is Aedes mosquito. This mosquito is a tropical and subtropical species widely distributed around the world, mostly between latitudes of 35 degrees north and 35 degrees south. These geographical limits correspond approximately to a winter isotherm of 10 degrees Celsius. Aedes aegypti has been found as far north as 45 degrees north, but such invasions have occurred during warmer months and the mosquitoes have not survived the winters. Also because of low temperature, Aedes aegypti is relatively uncommon about 1000 meters height. Now let us understand the pathophysiology of dengue fever. When biting a person for its blood meal, infected mosquito releases saliva containing the dengue viruses. Once in the body, this virus infects the human cells in the skin tissues. and then enters into the lymphatic system. The viral infection can now trigger a strong inflammatory reaction. During the incubation period, virus first replicate locally and then spreads to the bloodstream of infected person. This is known as viremia. For some patients, especially children, the dengue virus can cause severe form of disease like dengue hemorrhagic fever, in which blood vessels become permeable, resulting in plasma leakage. Ultimately, dengue hemorrhagic fever requires intensive hospital care when a mosquito bites an infected person and takes a bite for blood meal, it draws the dengue virus in the blood. By biting another person, it will transmit the virus and spread the disease. 
The clinical features of dengue virus due to any of the four dengue serotypes can produce the full spectrum of illness and severity. The spectrum of illness can range from a mild non-specific febrile syndrome to classic dengue fever to severe form of disease like dengue hemorrhagic fever and dengue shock syndromes. Dengue infected patients are either asymptomatic or they have one of the three clinical presentation like undifferentiated fever, dengue fever with or without hemorrhage or dengue hemorrhagic fever with shock or without shock. The asymptomatic infection is actually the one half of all dengue infected patients which does not show any clinical signs or symptoms of disease. The undifferentiated fever, it is the first clinical course is a relatively benign scenario but patient experience fever with mild non-specific symptoms that can mimic number of other acute febrile illness. They do not meet the case definition criteria for dengue fever. For the majority of these patients, unless dengue diagnostic serology and molecular testing is performed, the diagnosis will remain unclear. The symptomatic patients include dengue fever, which may show hemorrhage or not. The dengue hemorrhagic fever shows hemorrhagic symptoms, which can result into shock or it may be resolved with proper treatment. The phases of infection resulting in dengue hemorrhagic fever can be described into three phases. A febrile phase, a critical plasma leak phase and a convalescence or reabsorption phase. The febrile phase in which the fever lasts for two to seven days. The critical or plasma leak phase which lasts for at least one to two days and reabsorption phase which lasts for two to four days. It is the plasma leak phase which is the most important among all of this. In case of febrile phase, person is having high grade fever and other symptoms which are consistent with the dengue fever. So in febrile phase, person has sudden onset of fever with headache, mouth and nose bleeding, muscle and joint pains, vomiting, rash and diarrhea. In critical plasma leak phase, due to plasma leakage, person experiences the hypotension, pleural effusion, ascites, and gastrointestinal bleeding. In recovery phase, altered level of consciousness, seizures, itching, and bradycardia can be seen. In 2009, WHO has revised its dengue classification scheme from dengue fever, dengue hemorrhagic fever, and dengue shock syndrome. They have revised it to a probable dengue without warning sign, a dengue with warning sign and severe dengue. And this is very important because earlier the patients who have fall into the dengue hemorrhagic fever were not considered severe cases unless and until they fall into the shock syndrome category. So what are these classification schemes? So probable dengue means any person who live in or travel to dengue endemic area shows fever and any of the two following criteria nausea vomiting, rash, aches and pains, tunicate twist positive, leukopenia, any warning sign and laboratory confirmed dengue. The dengue with warning sign is Features of probable dengue with abdominal pain or tenderness, persistent vomiting, clinical fluid accumulation, because of bleed, lethargy, restlessness, level enlargement more than 2 cm, and laboratory indicators like increase in hematocrit and concurrent with rapid decrease in platelet counts. The severe dengue is associated with three phenomena the severe plasma leakage, severe hemorrhage or severe organ impairment which can be indicated in form of shock or fluid accumulation with respiratory distress, severe bleeding or liver function tests are altered like SGPT and COT are more than 1000, impaired consciousness level and heart and other organ failure. 
This is the presentation to show uh, the tunic weight test in which person is cuffed with a sphygma manometer and the pressure is raised between systolic and diastolic and keep it for 20 minutes and the number of particular rates are counted in cubital fossa. This is a typical tunicate test positive. Dengue is a RNA virus. It is having lots of envelope proteins below which there is a lipid bilayer and which covers the capsid. Below capsid there is an RNA genome. This virus when enters into the blood, its envelope protein binds to a very specific receptor known as cognate receptors on the host cell. The FC receptor uh, is involved in antibody dependent enhancement phenomena. Once it binds to cognate receptor, it is internalized by receptor mediated endocytosis. The virus then presents in the endosome and it undergoes some conformational changes so that the envelope proteins of virus will face the hydrophobic spike towards the membrane. These hydrophobic envelope spikes then penetrate the endosome membrane. Banding of this envelope protein causes fusion of viral membrane and endosome membrane. The capsid break apart and viral RNA is released into cytoplasm and it is transported to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Inside the endoplasmic reticulum, ends of RNA form the structure that bind to the translation initiation protein. The RNA translation initiation protein complex binds to a ribosome. The whole viral genome is translated as single polypeptide chain. The capsid protein is on cytoplasmic side of endoplasmic reticulum and host proteins activate membrane and envelope protein situated on luminal side of endoplasmic reticulum. On cytoplasmic side of endoplasmic reticulum, viral protease activates other protein to make a replication complex. Once the replication complex is formed, the ends of RNA fold up and form the circle. The positive sense viral RNA then attaches to viral replication complex. Now, the negative sense RNA copy is made using a positive sense RNA as a template. The positive sense RNA copy is made using negative sense RNA as template and some of newly formed positive RNA copies are translated to make more viral proteins. The newly formed proteins in which the envelope protein aggregates at the luminal side and the capsid protein aggregates at the cytoplasmic side of endoplasmic reticulum. Viral RNA binds to capsid protein at cytoplasmic side and viral RNA with capsid is packaged into a membrane coated with envelope protein. It penetrates the luminal side of endoplasmic reticulum and permeable proteins cover the tips of envelope protein to prevent premature fusion back to the cell. Virus then buds off from the endoplasmic reticulum, passes through the Golgi apparatus towards the cell surface. Before reaching the surface, the pre-membrane proteins are processed to make virus mature. The mature virus is then released from cell. And now the virus is ready to infect a new cell. The immune response in the dengue virus is known as primary immune response and a secondary immune response. 
initially there is viremia or antigenemia when virus levels are very high and one particular antigen known as NS1 antigen is present on viral surface and its level in blood is very high. Later on our immune system will develop or mount an immune response in form of IgM antibody which later on switch to IgG response. But whenever a person is infected second time with dengue virus the already formed IgG is present and it is the antibody which is responsible for antibody dependent enhancement phenomena. The laboratory diagnosis of dengue virus solely rely on mainly four methods virus isolation, molecular methods like layer time reverse transcriptase PCR, NS1 antigen detection by ELISA or immunochromatography and IgM or IgG antibody detection using ELISA or immunochromatography. As the confidence level is very high in direct methods like virus isolation, molecular methods and antigen detection, the accessibility is very good with antibody detection. The other supportive lab parameters like low hemoglobin, high hematocrit, low RBC count, neutrophilia and leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, altered liver function and renal function test and electrolyte imbalance can also give you a clue that person is suffering from dengue. They say that if a person is having fever since five days, it is best to do either antigen detection or viral DNA detection. But after five days, you can very well detect that person with help of antibodies like IgM ELISA. There is no specific antiviral treatment right now for dengue virus, only supportive treatment in form of fluids and analgesics are given. Dengue vaccine are under research and I will take another presentation on dengue vaccine research very soon. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed a presentation on dengue virus.